welcome to on board. Welcome on board for the towards product success. My name is Andrea Crisogono, and before we dive in, let's meet Tina. Tina is the product manager from Awesome Inc., and she is about to start and kick off her first software project. Let's see how all works out for her. So, in the first phase of the project, everything is green. Tina is optimistic and project looks op uh, optimizing. The team, uh, development team is also very enthusiastic and excited to start the project. All the ideas that they had before and all the problems that they had before seem very far, far away. And they think, you know, the problems that we had before, we will do differently this time. We'll start this project and we will move forward, we will implement user testing because we know it's important and this project will for sure be, su be success. Moving forward, Tina delivers the vision of the project to the development team. Everything seems ideal. S stakeholders are supporting her. She has all financials covered. All major features and epics are recognized. There are some spikes on the way, but she thinks, you know, I have time and I will think about it later. On the other hand, the development team, as I said, knows that they will have to integrate some third party software. But I think, you know, we can do that later. Let's focus on known features. And all those unknown, let's leave for later stages of development. After a few months, they realize that they missed some deadlines. There are some failures. And the development team knows that they missed some important steps in the, in the process, which caused technical debt, which for sure caused missed deadlines and failures. Tina tries to find the reasons what caused all of that. What are the problems? What can I do? She even blames stakeholders for adding new features and changing the scope of the project. However, there is nothing much to do. They had six months to finish the project and they find themselves in this phase in third and fourth month of development, where they probably had to have more than half project already done. So, Moving forward, the team tries to cheer, cheer up and saying, you know, well, we will change the scope of the project while adding new features, and everything will change when we start actual testing. However, everybody's more aware that there is no way out, and then they start to panic. And eventually, project fails. So this cycle for Tina and her team happens one project after the other, and she, on the way, implements some tricks learned. However, she never gets to understand what is the actual reason, what is causing all the failures. There is one brilliant mind who once defined insanity and said that it is insane doing the same things all over again, however, expecting different results. Is Tina insane as well? We'll see. According to statistics, in 2017, IT spending on global scale was $3.4 trillion. For you, just to make a quick comparison, in 2017, GDP for Czech Republic was $192 billion, which is about 20 times less than total spending on global scale in IT industry. As you can see, a lot of money is being spent in IT industry developing software projects, and it is in, un in unbelievable growth. However, how many of those projects actually succeed? There are 29% of projects who actually succeed. 52 are challenged and 19 fail. If we take these 52 and 19%, we get 71% unsuccessful projects. If, and if we multiply that with that um, global IT spending by $3.4 billion, we, we get 
2.4 trillion dollars that is being spent in IT industry on unsuccessful projects. So we get capital waste of 2.4 trillion dollars. So if you have to imagine your next project, and if you take all these statistics into account, you can predict that your next project will be late, that you will run out of budget, and that you have 71% chances not to succeed and not to meet the expectations. Why are these actually failures happening? I often hear from clients blaming technology. So the developers and technology are the ones who are taking all the fires. However, according to IBM statistics, 54% of projects fail because of project management, and only 3% fail because of technical reasons. So if you take, uh, in general, what project management is, it's all about how you plan, how you manage and lead your teams, how you prioritize, and how you uh, decide on releases and things that you have to make for your project to succeed. Another important information is where failures happen. It's amazing to see that only 2% of large projects succeed, while on the other hand, 62% of small projects achieve that success. Taking this into account, we can see big companies like Amazon, who are splitting their big teams and big projects into smaller ones. Amazon, for example, has more than 1,000 small teams. They call them two pizza teams because they are large enough to be fed by two pizzas. Another big giant and example is IBM, who has more than 6,000 similar teams. How did Tina lead her team to failure? There are probably tons of different reasons, but we'll mention just few of them. So projects usually start with an assumption, the sooner we start coding, the sooner we will be done, right? So Sina thought, okay, let's start coding. And while we are in code, we will add new features and see how they all fit in an overall picture of our project. Another thing is maybe Tina and her team didn't have the right expertise to plan the project and to set up all the project components which are responsible to achieve those requirements. Another reason, or maybe it's correlated with the previous one, are insufficient resources. So, in order to lower the costs, we usually take harder road and we skip some proven approaches that lead us to succeed and eventually result in missed deadlines and expectations. So we cut the corners on best practices. Another resource that we have to take into account are people, even though I don't like calling people resources, but eventually they are somehow because they are the ones who are responsible for if your project is going to fail or succeed. It's important that you have um, edu educated and manageable people who, who you can trust and who can help you in planning, development, and finally in releasing the product. And the last but not the least reason to fail are project variations, meaning creep in terms of sc scope and features. So projects usually start larger than they should. And during the development, adding new features, they add scope as well, which affects the overall expectations. People are good at having ideas, what it says here, but, the, but, they are follow, but they are following plan poorly. And we usually omit to, commit, uh, to uh, communicate with our clients and customers. So successful projects involve their customers and future clients and stakeholders and end users into development and planning 
sooner because the feedback is what they want to get in order to follow with the rest of their development. What can Quintina do better to lead teams successfully? As every other product management, product manager, Tina should strive to plan better. Planning product instead of project, Tina gives the team a clear vision and scope how that product is going to be delivered. Ask all the questions. I sometimes hesitate to ask questions because I think somebody will think I'm dumb or will laugh. And that's common probably for the product managers who have less technical background. However, I learned that not asking questions is just an um, easier way to say that you are incompetent. So asking questions gives and reveals ideas and reveals some um, gaps that you may not have thought of. How many of you have seen an audience very shy audience where there is nobody who has the courage to ask a question. And all of a sudden, somebody asks a question and starts the flood of questions. It happens, right? So questions generate new questions. And it is a just a um, way how people communicate. So constant reminder of asking questions is just um, a reminder for everyone what it takes to be successful. Another advice for you and Tina is to split your projects and teams into smaller ones. You saw that you have 30% 30 chance, 30 chances to succeed if your team and project is smaller than a large. And not only projects, but also development flow, where you have to deliver your product in smaller chunks in order to receive the feedback from the end users sooner than later. It is hard to say no, I know, even though to the party that pays the bills. However, don't be afraid to say no, but make sure you are polite. It is of everyone's interest to share if you, if you want to share that something um, that's something you have to change or that something has to be changed. So saying no, you may be rejected. However, at least you had a courage and you stuck your neck out and you showed that you care. Another thing is involve. Involve everybody you can right at start. That means your team members, every single role in your team, involve stakeholders, clients, end users, and in that way, you will focus on, what, on your vision and your goals and what you want to achieve with your product. And the last thing, but not the least, is testing and adapting. So if you're using and if you've heard of agile methodologies, it's all about this. So you have to check regularly, very often, yourself, your performance, your teams, and your project success in order to adapt to those changes, adapt the changes to go, to, to go forward with your product and with your development. <clears throat> to conclude, if you want to be part of that 29%, and I hope that you will be the one who will make that number even higher of successful projects, plan your products th that have clear vision and goals have smaller teams who will be empowered to say no and involve and inspire everybody to work together for the success of all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you. Uh, I'm actually uh, happy for, I want to thank you for researching uh, the fails so much. Uh, because it's actually empowering. And actually my first question is, what got you into uh, this topic specifically? Because 71% to me, it was like, whoa, like really shocking. Uh, so what, like, were you Tina at some point also? Sure, I think we are Tina at some point in, in life, in any situation, especially if you are, have to do with people 
and creativity and managing teams. So I can say that I learned a lot and the most while failing. And that's the best situation when you want to go and where you want to be sometime to, to learn and to adapt and to change in order to be better. Are there maybe some resources, books, podcasts that uh, you would recommend to any of us who would like to maybe like get even more empowered to solve uh, the product, I mean, planning failures that we all face? Well, not particularly, but there are plenty of books and mediums where you can search for uh, and Google it, whatever you want to find out, just Google it and you will find for, for sure what you need. Is there any question in the audience, maybe? Yes, okay, <laughs> we have one here. <coughs> yeah, are you ready? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, like, you, like, your presentation is mostly about, li like, the project management point of view, but what can you do if you are a developer and you feel like your product is starting, like, to get on this road to failing? What, how can you change it, change its direction and get it better? Did, did you find yourself sometimes uh, in this position, like Tina is, but being development team? No, like, I mean like I as a I am a developer, and if I feel like the management is doing something wrong, how can I like get them to the point when they understand that the project is going to fail soon? Um, well, thank you for the question. <laughs> Uh, it's a tough one because, uh, as you c could see from the presentation, everybody wants to do their best to, f to save the project, to save the team. But if I, I can say that if you are all together at one point and everybody realizes there should be something or you have to change, it's better to change it earlier than wait for the, for the last step of the, where you have to launch the project. So I would say there's discover it, Soon as sooner the possible and elevate and ask for the help, suggest and, sh and, s and uh, show what you want to change in order to see the impact on the project. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, can you throw it to, yeah, yeah. Oh. down here? I'm wondering, have you ever worked with a team that actually didn't believe in the target you had? And how did you make sure that then that the team will start believing and that you will actually achieve what you are trying to achieve, meaning building the product that you are supposed to build? I'm not sure if I heard it right, but am I, am, am I believing in... If you have an experience leading a team that didn't believe that you can manage to build the product that you are building. Oh, if, if they can manage to build something. And how you manage that situation. Yeah, the motivation is the real trigger for every single team and it, it depends how, with which energy you uh, communicate that vision, what needs to be built. And it's important for have, to have educated teams and to have teams who can uh, not wait for you to drive them through. So it's important for everybody to get involved. And uh, I like to say uh, the quote of another brilliant mind who said, I'm not hiring you so I can tell you what to do. I'm hiring you to tell me how to be better and what to do. So take it that and I, I think it will help you <laughs> on your, your next project. Nobody else? Thank you very much for your patience and listening. Yeah, we have uh, Andrea here only for 30 more minutes because she has to yeah. unfortunately leave us. Uh, so I'm just giving space for like one last question in case... You <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have two there and I guess we have time for both, but those are last questions. Thank you. Um, actually, like I found myself a lot in, in what you already presented because I'm working as a project manager for a product as well. 
Uh, my question for you is that um, how you deal with, uh, let's say, to communicate with stakeholders and especially the clients? Because usually, not always, that the clients understanding exactly what you are trying to convince them, what you want to advise them. Because basically, it, you said that they hire us to to tell them, like, uh, not or not to have them tell them to do, but to to tell them what is the best for the business, for example. But it's usually quite difficult to actually communicate with them in such a way and uh, usually people tend to say to you what they want not exactly what they actually need and we, we always want to develop some small chunk like to, to release the MVP as soon as possible but usually it's not that way and how to communicate this to the clients and the stakeholders thank you thank you for a question very nice question. Okay, uh, I'll, let me try to uh, to s sum all of that. Um, so communicating to stakeholders uh, is usually tough because they have their own expectations, and then you have to transfer those expectations to your team in order to deliver what they want. So um, it goes with the, re the resources as well. You have to communicate the resources you have on hand, and um, connect that with responsibilities that you have towards the stakeholders. So if you tr try to find the best way how to deliver that, the most possible way is to, um, in milestones, as you said, to have MVPs. So everything is in that planning phase where you plan the milestones and MVPs you want to deliver first. You focus on value, was the most value to your stakeholders and you focus to delivering that first. And then moving forward, you kind of combine all of that in further stages. Thank you. Thank you. And we also had, uh, yes, so can you just pass it behind you, please? Catch it. <coughs> um, so project manager working for an organization and I have uh, with confusion regarding planning the product uh, because trying to embrace that we embrace the change. We deliver the MVP, we, check, we reiterate it until we got actually what we need. And in the situation, I may be similar with Tina, that we are trying to get to developers, to get to development as soon as possible to start the cycle from the beginning. So how do you find the agile with this waterfall, basically the planning of the product as, as you were this is in sense of agile. Thank you for your question. This is in sense of agile as well, because, uh, but the point of that was that they totally skipped planning. Agile doesn't tell you skip the planning. It tells you no documentation, people and communication over uh, documentation, right? So um, this is it's not to skip the planning. Planning has to has to be there. You have to know what are you trying to build and where you want to get in order to start development. Tina totally forgot and skipped the planning. And they said, you know, let's start coding right away, even though they didn't know what they have to do. They said, OK, we'll add features on the way. So um, um, I, I use Agile as well, and I iterate. And uh, that's the only way for me to, to, to talk about the success, because it's the most um, how to say, a uh, proven way to achieve success if you are building the product. So um, don't skip that phase of planning, I can say that. Thank you. Okay, everyone, uh, if you probably, like if you have more questions, just maybe try hovering around that side of an entrance and maybe you can still ask Andrea after, um, yeah, after she's gone. Uh, so everyone, that was Andrea Grisogono. Thank you.